I'm locked up on Bill Clemens' unit. Um, you can you can verify Bill Clemens in Amarillo. They have a boot factory, and I work in the boot factory. My um my job is to take the staple out this boot. They send racks of boots. I just gotta take all these quick staples out, and slide them. Now it's a bunch of big dudes. Um, they job is to stack the boots, and this is white guy, about six two, six three. He is um cleaning dust off these lights, and this is how the scene went. Exactly. Big dudes talking to the white dude. Get your bitch ass down off that ladder. Saying all type of reckless shit to him. <laughs> all type of reckless shit. They big though. Ali says this. Hey man, why don't you just come down so they'll stop fucking with you? Fuck you. What you want to do, bitch? talking to me and everybody in the booth factory was like boy you wild I said hey white boy you got to come down now cause I'm gonna beat your motherfucking ass cause you can't call me out my name cause I can't give you an inch cause you would take a mile let me tell you about letting somebody in the free society if somebody call you a bitch or call you out your name you gonna say some little verbal shit and you gonna walk off that's, your norm that's what normally happens I'm not constructed like that because the place that I was in for six years, I'm not constructed like that. So you call me out my name, this shit has went way past what you thought. You, this is not going to be no verbal altercation because in my mind, in prison, if you call me a bitch, now 3,000 men are going to call me a bitch whenever they see me. I can't allow it. Can't allow it. I've been here at this time, I had been here for about four years, and everybody knew that this white boy had bit off way more than he could chew. Everybody knew it. Everybody in the booth fact like, no, you do know he has already been tried and tested in this place. He's been in several riots. I had been in several riots at this time, several riots. I'd have been stabbed already. I'd already done heinous shit in here, so this is just going on my resume. And... <laughs> So he come down, he came down with some gusto too. That mother came down up them steps. <laughs> some gusto. We went to the little corner away from the guard and he got his ass wore the fuck out and then slammed in some hot glue and burnt all up on the side. So the Aaron Nation, this is one of their friends, they put, a, they, put a, they put a hit on me in jail. They put a hit. You obviously it failed because I'm still, I'm here. <laughs> They put a hit on me, unbeknownst to them, the type of rank that I had. I had been here since I was 19. At this time, I was about 22. I had already made my bones in this place, and I had already been taking care of people. See, I worked in the laundry. Worked in the laundry, and everybody know in the laundry, in the laundry, you want fresh underwear, you want good T-shirts, and you have to have a laundry hookup in order to have it happen. I worked in the laundry, and I was the fire and safety clerk. So I come through, and I, I, you get a case, your case come to the fire and safety office first. What I do is go through the files. <sighs> tear up cases. No, yeah, out of, uh, out of place case? You, motherfucker, you in jail, you out of place, period. <laughs> For white people, Mexican people, black people, who, I, who were my friends. I gave everybody good laundry. So now you didn't put a hit on me, and everybody has told me they gonna try to get you. <laughs> so I'm telling this story because I need to put it on this tape. I'm telling this story, so <laughs> and I'm giving names so people can verify it. So this is brother named Jihad. Jihad heard about the hit. Jihad is Willie D's. Rapper from the ghetto boy, Willie D's best friend. And Willie D know this story because Jihad told him this story before I even got out of prison, that he had met me in prison. So I met Jihad on a unit called Torres. He was in a riot and they had put him in lockup and I worked in the laundry there. So I came through and I gave everybody on that block fresh underwear and I brought, Jihad, just because I was going to see Jihad, and brought him toothpaste and food and envelopes and everything. I had never seen his face. 
I had never seen his face. I just heard he was in lockup. I had never seen his face. So we get to Bill Clemens' unit where this incident happened. Jihad is on Bill Clemens, and I met him by him telling Alameen a story about a man that helped him out on Torres' unit that he had never seen. And I came, and I'm like, you was on Torres' unit when? He's like, he told me, 1993. I said, I came over there in 93. He said, I was locked up in the thing. I said, Man, I brought you them envelopes and that toothpaste and stuff. He's like, oh, shit, that was you. Now, he don't even understand the connection between this. Jihad hears, hears that the Aryan Nation is going to try to stab me up. And this is a corridor that comes from the boot factory where when you go in to go eat, people can come out of there and do anything to you. It's just one little creepy little place in Bill Clemens that you can die, and they know it. They know you can get killed right here if somebody after you. But Jihad is walking with me to the cafeteria. And Mustafa comes around the corner. He said, man, hold up. Hold up for a second. Hold up for a second. They in this room, and there's about four of them in there. Jihad's so mad that he busts in the room and slams the door, and all you hear, ah, 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 ah. you hear all this fucking screaming. Jihad then went in there and stabbed the shit out of four white Aryan nation dude. He come out, he got blood on his shirt. I take off my shirt, give him my shirt. Mustafa take the bloody shirt and, and go to the block. <laughs> I get a case because I'm I'm out of uniform. I just got on a t-shirt and in in the pants. Why are you out of uniform? I'm like, man, I, I was going to eat and um shit ran out so fast. <laughs> forgot my damn shirt. <laughs> man, give me a, a case. Give me a case, a little minor shit. I go back, Jihad, like, yeah, we good. I say, yeah, we straight. We straight. We gonna get the ass again, though. We're gonna get the ass again. Now I wanna just talk to the Aaron Nation dude. I say, hey man. Y'all put a hit on me? He said, hey, yeah, man, you fuck one of our people up. But it was one-on-one. -on -one. Your man just got his ass whooped. Well, I'm just saying, we can't take that. We don't, well, I don't give a fuck what you can take. Do all of y'all want to die on this unit? <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> man, what, how you figure that? Then the Mexicans, Mexican mafia, come through. The head of Mexican Mafia was in lockup that I had already been given underwear and taking shit to. He that motherfucker come right through the slip. Hey man, y'all put y'all motherfucking hands on that on him. Everybody gonna die. <laughs> I say, man, do you understand what it's like when you got Mexican and black? And y'all really fucking up on some other shit. It's 13 of y'all. Thirteen, and then how the ice got broke. I like Charles, white boy named Charles. Charles, I just tore up two goddamn drug cases for you, and you really out here with this bullshit? He said, "You know something? I damn sure forgot about that." I said, "Mama, you forgot that you got busted with weed, and I tore the case up. You ain't shit." And he was like, "Get your ass out of here. We good." He talking about to this to his wife, get your ass out here. You got your ass well, got us out here fucking up behind you. I'm like, yo, man, this is a community of shit. Don't get fucking killed in here behind feeling. Feeling. You got your ass whooped. You didn't you didn't like it. Now you're gonna get everybody killed. Dumb shit. Now this is what happens to your people in prison. That's why I tell this story. Your people get in gangs in here and you wonder why they don't come home. Cause they get gotta do all this extra bullshit to survive. And now the drug laws has fucked it up really bad because now they treating people like patients because of white kids. White kids got the, the, the penal system. Like now they want to let everybody out and be cool. But the gangs and the shit, the fucking gangs that go in is fucking insane. You let your people go to prison. You let your people go to prison. This is your motherfucking fault. This is your fault. As a human being, this is your fucking fault. Because in China, you cannot allow your child to go to prison because this. Your child go to prison, the whole motherfucking family go. What? Look it up. <laughs> Just imagine, you at your goddamn good corporate job, your son out doing some bullshit, you get arrested, they come get your ass too. Sir, can, I, can, can you come with me? Hey, what the fuck I do? Little Timmy in jail, bring your ass on too. Bring your ass on too. This is, a crazy, this is a crazy society. We lock up our women 
You know how many women locked up in this country? Not you you don't know or not you locked up? Which one? Not me. <laughs> but it's possible. You could be locked up for trespassing. Trespassing. You scared? You should be. I'm trying to scare you. It's working. It's working. But you stop raising these feeling ass kids. <laughs> <laughs> 